Hello everyone, my name is Rachel Jin. Uh, now 35 years, I've been uh, doing cybersecurity product management for over 15 years. I'm based in Dallas, Texas, and thank you for having me, and thank you for introduction by Eva. And uh, so, I'm really excited today, and uh, because the age of AI is here right now. And um, I know as cybersecurity leaders, it's on us to figure out the complexity, you know, that comes with this new technology, which is the artificial intelligence. It could be very overwhelming, I know. And, uh, but we have some way to do that. And once you get the hang of it, and it's absolutely amazing. I have uh, a few things I would like to share today. And uh, I want to start with, understanding the risks that comes with AI. So let's go to the attacker's world first. Let's see how attackers are using AI today. Um, so for the AI risk, we can categorize them into three key categories. First is rogue AI, second scaling fraud, and data privacy, let's jump in. So rogue AI is the AI that can go crazy, can go you know, out of control. And there are three very important types of the rogue AI. One is subverted rogues. That is like prompt injections, jailbreaks. They are trying to manipulate the large language model. And second, the malicious rogues. Attackers can deploy these malicious rogues into other people's system resource for malicious use purpose. And we also have accent, uh, accidental rogues that we found that that is usually by human error or system limitations. And also we see that AI is actually enabling fraud at an insane rate. And why adversaries are turning to AI? Very simple, whatever you can think of, attackers can think of. Number one reason, automation. Attackers also want to automate their attacking workflow. Second, quality. They can use AI to generate higher quality phishing and fraud. Third one, everyone know, AI can help you translate to any language you like. So why not? And also another kind of attack that uh, we are familiar with, in the past, actually, it was very easy to identify spot nets from the social networks. They would send a lot of identical messages, so it's just the kind of easy to know they were fake. But now, thanks to AI, all of those messages could be personalized, so it's way harder to detect. And all of these things can really, you know, screw up your organization's reputation and operations. And uh, recently, deepfake is very popular. But I tell you, deepfake is not something new. It was there for already seven plus years. But why now it's on top? Because of all the AI revolution, it's become so real. And uh, I will pull off a real uh, deepfake attack. And so you can see that. And you can also see what options you have. So let me do this. Firstly, I'm targeting a company's executive. One is CEO, the other is chief legal officer. And now I'm gathering all the videos from the social media. And I train, I put all the, you know, contents into my deepfake engine and to train the model. Now I'm doing the scripting and do the training now. Yeah, so I trained the model. And then next thing is I write some script that what I want the voice to say. And I put the script there and merge together with the video. And also I need to make sure all the video and the script I prepared are ready before the live call because I have a target employee later. And then uh, what's next? 
Now I need to get a target employee get on the call. So I use AI to help me generate efficient email so I can get an employee onto the call. And the last step is, okay, let me setting up all the virtual camera, all the, you know, virtual video or script ready. And now it's showtime. Let's see how it goes. Eric, what do they need to start the investigation? We need to export all transaction data from the past six months. Dale, can you package this up and upload to the Hopkins private Dropbox? I'll put the link in the chat for you. Okay, sure. Thanks for managing. We're meeting with them in 30 minutes. They need the file in hand by then. Okay, we need to drop to prep for the meeting. Thank you. You can see the employee's face. The two people on top, they are playing CEO and the chief legal officer, but actually they are deep faked. And the target employee is at the bottom. And now after this live call, you know what the employee is doing? Packaging the file and the follow what the CEO and the chief legal officer told him to do. And uh, then go to the Zoom, find the link, that link was posted by the legal officer. Oh no, he's uploading now. <laughs> oh, when the file was uploaded 100%, you know, it means the attack was successful. Thank you. <laughs> so, what did you just see? The attack started with a, um, a social media mining, and then they download all the contents and train the model. Once the model was trained, and then they customize the content, and they get an employee on the call. And we all know when you join a company as a newer and usually junior employee, they don't want to push back the senior staffers, and then the attack was successful. Of course, you probably also see some other techniques like real-time face swapping. That's another technique you can use and but I want to ask one question what would happen if the employee you see the employee if the employee was trained and empowered to challenge the executive if the call goes you know goes weird and if this employee was trained what happened let's see hey I'm a bit uncomfortable about this and the video is looking a little weird to me Mind turning your head from side to side so I can make sure this isn't a deep fake? Training and empowering employee is easy and it helps. But, but it's not foolproof because, you know, human's eyes, you cannot trust your human's eyes 100%. So, what if? There is a technology to help you, not just the people process, trust your human eyes. How about if we have some technology to help? How it looks like? Let's check it out. Hey, Eric Dale, we're pulling in Hopkins to assess the situation. Eric, what do they need to start the investigation? We need to export all transaction data from the past six months. Is it amazing <laughs> with technology? <laughs> So combining people, process, and technology to defend all the AI risk is very important. And <laughs> so I talk about, you know, from attacker's perspective, we talk about AI risk. Now let's shift focus to your own organization, talking about what AI risk you have in your organization. And the first thing is, now all the leadership team, your leadership team is expecting you you know, counting on you to understand everything AI, understanding what risk it brings, AI brings to your organization, and counting on you to understand how to safely use AI, how to stop the misuse of AI, and what, how it impacts your business. So it's really our responsibility today. And this is very important page is if you take this responsibility, you need to understand what kind of risks it really bring into your organization when your organization started to use AI. 
And uh, let me give you two simple examples. You know the risk and the, what security solution you can do. So just the one example, user attempts to use an unsanctioned AI application that was not approved by your organization. In this case, simple, you just need an AI gateway to block the access. And then your employee cannot use the application that was not approved by you. And let's say, they are using some application that already approved, but you know, when they do the prompt and the response, the response content has something violate your defined rules. The same AI gateway can help. Of course, for you, you also need to start to think about how to enable the deep fake detection in your endpoint agent and so on. And also we know that um, today, AI has this big potential and also because of one thing, you have much, much stronger computing power right now. And uh, we see more and more organizations and countries, they are starting to build their AI data center. And no matter it's AI factory or they build their sovereign AI or they host their AI data center in public cloud or private cloud, what they need to have, not only data center, they need security to secure this AI data center. They need to talk to some strategic security partner to understand how to secure the data, how to secure the model, how to secure the application, how to secure the AI usage, and how to secure the infrastructure. And the last part I would like to talk about Think about what you are using, what security tools you are using, SIEM, SOAR, XDR, Attack Surface Management, and different things, GRC. And uh, in the age of AI, what you need to do and what we can do. And uh, we see big opportunity here, but why? Actually, you know, people would say, AI was there already for 10 years, 20 years. Why this time it's so different? Why this time we can do so much more? Because of the agentic AI innovations. Because this time you can really understand the big picture of the understanding the big picture context of your data. And you can use large language model that can really interpret and let you to reason all the data, no matter what sources it, they are coming from. And uh, one example, traditional AI will give you a chatbot, but agentic AI will, will go beyond the chatbot and it will provide you a more proactive approach by goal-driven methodology. And also, um, you know, LLM caught everyone's uh, attention. The biggest reason why, that's because the amazing language understanding about all the complex context. And with agentic AI, you can understand the data. And also traditional AI, you cannot see the whole picture from an attacker's view, but agentic AI help you to understand that. And so, you know, um, Eva was here and uh, we have a lot of trenders here. As cybersecurity company, we spend hours and hours and hours every single week talking to our customers to understand what enterprise, you know, challenge is in terms of security. And then we prioritize what kind of solution we should give to our customers, give to the enterprise, no matter it's big enterprise, small enterprise or medium size. And then we figured out every enterprise, no matter you are big, small, or medium, you need a next generation of cyber risk management. Are you still using Lexi Sim? Are you still using the traditional SOAR or traditional way to do the cyber risk management? And uh, now in the age of AI, you need to revisit, you need to rethink. Think about, you know, the cost is so high and you put a lot of your security team there, but the resource still not enough. And you ingest so much data into your system. You save all the data for three years, seven years, but to be honest, you don't understand the data. 
in the age of AI with all the agentic AI or with the large language model, we can reason, we can interpret all the data. You have a better way to manage your cybersecurity. And uh, so with all of these new technology, you can really take control of your data. It's not just saving your data here and do the, all the indexing, rule mapping. You should use the new way to really truly understand why you have this data. And when you go to board room to generate your reporting, you don't need to, you know, go to all the data and put into another PPT. Generative AI can help you. And also with this new next gen risk management and uh, you can be more proactive and uh, there's opportunity to help you simplify and consolidate all the security tools. And of course, your cost will be reduced because we have a smarter way, we have more intelligent way. So leaders, what's up next? Three t key takeaways. First, Please be prepared for rogue AI. This is a new risk that you need to face and you need to understand how to combat these rogue AI risk. And second, embrace the transformation. We cannot continue saying block this, block that because you are block your productivity. You are blocking your business. You need to embrace this and you need to understand how to secure this journey. The last thing, you need a platform-wide mesh to help you accelerate security outcome. And you need a new way, a more intelligent way to help you gain the greater resilience. Thank you very much. This is our presentation. <laughs>